Hello and welcome to ADHD Support Talk Radio. My name is Tara McGillicuddy and I am the host of ADHD Support Talk Radio. I am also an adult ADD and ADHD productivity coach and the founder and director of addclasses.com. And at addclasses.com, we provide virtual support and education to people affected by ADD and ADHD. We offer free webinars. We have an extensive library, audio library with more than 175 hours of courses. And we also offer more in-depth support programs. You can learn more about addclasses.com and sign up for a free webinar by going to www.addclasses.com. And with that, I would like to welcome Diane Dempster to ADHD Support Talk Radio. In just a moment, we're going to be talking about pushing buttons when you have ADHD. But before we get started talking about the topic, Diane, can you let our listeners know a bit about yourself and how they can get in touch with you after listening to today's show? Sure. Hi, Tara. Thanks for having me on today. I'm really excited. Um, I do. I work for a company called Impact ADHD, and we do parent training, coaching, and support virtually. Um, we work with parents not just with, of kids with ADHD, but other complex challenges, because we know a lot of these kids who have ADHD have other stuff going on with them. And we have a variety of programs and supports and a great amount of free resources available on our website at impactadhd.com. Um, and would encourage anybody who's interested in finding out more to go out there and get a free gift, which is on our, the homepage of our website, and learn more about what we do and connect with us. Okay. Yeah, definitely check out her website. Great stuff. You guys have great resources there. Definitely um, hey. one of the go-to places where I send people for parenting resources. Um, yeah, so. it's really we, – we created it so both my business partner and I are parents of kids with ADHD and all other kinds of challenges, and we found there was just this gap in terms of – you know, getting information. And so we wanted to create an easy-to-access resource where parents could go and get help. And um, I, we're really proud and excited for what we've done and have won a uh, Healthline Best Blog Award for the last couple of years. And so we really are proud of what we're doing there. Thank you for that. Okay. So let's get t- started talking about pushing buttons. And why is this an important to- topic to address today? Well, I think it's the, the thing that comes up for me, and it's a particularly important topic for me as a person because it's something that I've worked on kind of all my adult life, and, and I probably should have worked on it as a kid. But I think that it's one of, you know, conflict and tempers and um, in, intensity in the home, whether it's as an adult with ADHD or whether it's a family or whether it's, you know, a parent with a child, this sort of thing comes up a lot as a challenge. I mean, parents get frustrated with their kids and and their challenges. Kids get triggered. It's just button pushing, which is that idea of, you know, I've I've done something and you're, you know, you've you've been set off, like for lack of a better word, your your emotions have started going, is is a really important thing that happens all the time. Mm -hmm. And if we, and it gets in the way, right? So if we are not, conscious about when our kids are triggered or when we're triggered or our spouse or whoever it is that we're engaging in, it can really cause a lot of challenges. And adults, um, it, I, I know that in the workplace, um, emotional intensity is more likely to cause a person to lose their job than any other, an adult with ADHD to lose their job than any other kind of situation. Um, again, in parents and kids, c- conflict and, and kind of trigger management is such a key, key challenge. And that's really what makes this such an important topic because it's so prevalent. It's something that we all deal with, and it's really pretty normal, but it does cause a lot of challenges. So what do you mean when you talk about button pushing? What, how do you, what is the definition of that, or what do you mean? Well, so, uh, you know, we all have buttons. We all have those things that kind of get under our skin. And and what I'm really talking about here is that process that happens when something just hits us the wrong way, whether it causes an upset for us or it causes an upset for somebody else. That's kind of the the button getting pushed. So it's like I see a great example. I had a client who had this old boss whose name was Nick, and Nick was this terrible boss. And all the time, whenever she meets somebody named Nick, she kind of like bristles because it's like she can remember that boss that she had like 20 years ago whose name was Nick. And it's like, he's not here. This person is completely different. But anytime she meets somebody named Nick, that button gets pushed. Or sometimes if our kids, uh, disrespect is a great example in the family that happens. If our kids say something snarky, I've got two teenagers and they're always saying snarky stuff. 
And if I've got a button around that, it's like I'll be like, ah, I've got disrespectful kids. They're so rude. They're so inconsiderate. You know, I might say, oh, I'm a bad mom, or how did I end up in this situation, or these kids have to change, or, you know, and I start to get upset, and, and, and you know, my body responds, my mm-hmm. brain responds. I mean, there's all kinds of kind of chemistry and biology that happens as a result of it, but it's really kind of that sort of something happens to us and we get triggered, a button gets pushed. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. It's interesting when you, like, I was um, taking care of my nieces and nephew a few weeks ago, and my nephew gets his bus- button pushed, and my niece, who's, you know, the middle child, like, likes to see his buttons pushed. They're sitting there eating, and she was eating you know, the pasta with her fingers, and she, she wouldn't do that, you know, if she was out of the house. It was driving him crazy. Every time it drove him crazy, she'd do it more. Like, and that was something that bothered him and irritated him. So it's interesting, you know, when you have the person whose buttons get pushed. But a lot of times you have that person on the other side who can see the reaction. And it's, I mean, for kids, it's obviously, you know, that's kids being kids. I'm sure most adults don't try to keep pushing somebody else's buttons. But, yeah, it's it's really interesting. Well, and the reality is that the closer you are to somebody, the easier it is to push yes. the buttons because for two reasons. One is that they tend to be more vulnerable around us. So mm-hmm. it's like if we're around a stranger or a boss or somebody like that, we've got a little bit of our guard up. And I don't know about you, but when I come home, it's like I want to be able to relax. I don't want to have to worry about walking around on eggshells. And so I'm a little bit more exposed. And our kids or our family members or people closest to us really do know us better. And so their ability, whether it's conscious or unconscious, to kind of really trigger those things that are most sensitive to us is is increased. And so it does tend to happen a lot in families. Um, We create habits that way even. And there's a couple of things about ADDers, and, and you said kids will be kids, but there's also a couple of things about being ADHD that kind of make button pushing a little bit different. Um, can I talk about that for a second? Yeah, please do. Because there's there's kind of two things underlying it, and, and I noticed um, one of them is impulse control, right? And so we know that impulse control is an executive function challenge that a lot of people with ADHD have. So our ability to go, oh, wait, that might hurt that person's feelings before we say something is less active. So we're more, if we're an adult with ADHD or a kid with ADHD, that filter isn't as strong. And so we're more likely to ignore the impulse control and just say that thing that's a zinger. Mm -hmm. Whereas we might, you know, someone else who has more impulse control, whether because they're more mature, they're older, or whether because they have more executive function is, you know, that control is not as much there. So that's one thing is impulse control. The second piece of it that's really very interesting is that the ADHD brain, we know, loves dopamine, and it loves that dopamine rush to try to get it going and get it stimulated. A lot of times what happens is that ADDers unconsciously create conflict Mm -hmm. because conflict increases the dopamine. So I, I have a former spouse that, and, and I know Elaine, my business partner, has said the same thing about her partner, that sometimes somebody will pick a fight with you, and you're like, why are you picking a fight with me? And and the reality is that they're they're doing it unconsciously because they're getting a dopamine rush from it, which stimulates their brain, which helps them to focus, which helps them to be more successful in their day. And I think Elaine was telling the story on her husband that, you know, every night before they go to bed, there would be this sort of conflict creation because it gave them enough dopamine to relax and go to sleep at night. And mine was exactly the opposite. Every morning I found, like, on my, on my ex-husband's way out the door in the morning, it was like he'd, like, create an argument about something periodically. And I'm like, what was that all about? And mm-hmm. it gave him enough energy to get started in his day and kind of really drive and get going, you know, like like a cup of coffee might, you know. Yeah. So, so button pushing and conflict really does create a dopamine rush. Um, that can be really helpful to the brain. So it's a, it's a trap we can easily fall into. So it's a form of self-medication um, for people with yeah. ADHD in a sense. Yes. And it, and because it's so unconscious, both in terms of doing it and reacting to it, mm-hmm. it those habits get created really, really easily. Yeah. I remember mornings in my house growing up. I was me and my younger sister, and I think my whole family has ADHD undiagnosed. Mornings were just crazy. We'd all push each other other's buttons because none of us were morning people and that helped to wake yeah. us up and get us out the door. Oh yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Well and the, and again it's kind of it's it's unconscious but it's self it's self medication. And yeah. how many of us it's probably healthier self medication than some other things we could choose. Yeah. And it can be really destructive in relationships because if you're on the receiving end and I you know I happen to be 
uh, a non-ADHD adult. And, and if I would not understood, and for a long time I did it, that my ex was not doing it purposefully, it was yeah. just something that he was unconsciously doing, it can really, it can really be painful and hurtful. And it's like, why are you, why are you saying such hurtful things? And so that's that place where compassion and understanding, you know, what if you're on the receiving end of that mm-hmm. button pushing to kind of say, this person is, this person has a hard time with impulse control. They're not yeah. doing this on purpose. They're not doing this to be vindictive or mean. It's just that their ability to kind of filter and act effectively is different than mine is or different than someone without ADHD. Okay. So how do we deal with button pushing, whether you're the person who's pushing the buttons or you're on the receiving end? Well, I think the first thing is to just be aware of, of the buttons that exist and, you know, both your own buttons, knowing those things that trigger you, and also being aware of, of the other person's buttons. So, like, if, if you're a parent like me and you've got kids with big buttons, it's like I have a teenager who, you know, her sensitivity is around control. And so if I know that um, she has a strong need to feel control in her life as much as she can as a 16-year-old girl, mm-hmm. I approach my communication with her in a very different way than I would somebody who I'm telling what to do. Because I know when I start to tell her what to do, she's immediately going to get triggered. So I mm-hmm. ask more than I tell. You know, if you know that you're triggered by um, being late, another example. It's not even somebody doing something to you, but you, you, you have a button about promptness. Mm-hmm. You, know, you can do some things to prevent being late all the time. You can add extra time into your day. You can make sure that if you're reliant on somebody else to be on time, that you're communicating effectively with that person and say, you know, I really want to get out the door in 20 minutes. What do we need to do to make sure that that can happen? And, you know, you know so kind of being aware of what some of your buttons are or the people in your life's buttons is is an important piece of it. Yeah. So there's prevention and then there's management. Mm-hmm. And there's a whole process that we teach at Impact ADHD, which is kind of really about trigger management. So it's like, what do you do when your buttons get pushed? And it's about realizing that when our buttons get pushed, we kind of go unconscious. We go into the more primal part of our brain, the part of our brain that goes fight or flight. I got to get out of here. I got to fix this. I got to change this. This is terrible. Um, and we're really not problem solving anymore and so it's about we call it reclaiming the brain from amygdala hijack so amygdala is that primal part of the brain and so what you want to do is to kind of just take a deep breath or take a sip of water or do something to become more responsive rather than reactive Mm -hmm. because when our button gets pushed our tendency is to react my kid says something snarky and i'm like how dare you you can't talk to me like that i'm your mother you're disrespecting me, right? So that's a reaction. A response would be, okay, I'm going to take a deep breath and go, wow, my kid's really having a hard time not being snarky right now. I wonder what's going on for him. How can I help him to communicate in a way that's going to be more respectful? Because I know he doesn't mean to be disrespectful. He's just having a hard time at the moment. So if I, if I, if my button gets pushed, I'm going to be like, how dare you? If I can reach Bond rather than reacting, then I'm going to solve the problem and help the situation move forward instead of fighting against the situation. Does that distinction make sense, Tara? Yes, it does. And does that take practice and skill to go from reactive mode to slowing down? It does. I think that's, that's a great, great add to that because it's not, this is something that happens so automatically. And most of us have buttons that have been there forever and ever and ever. And I think about like one of my own buttons. I'm a, I'm a middle child and I'm the only daughter. And so I've got an older brother and a younger brother. One used to beat me up and one would tell on me. And I always tell this story because it's like, so whenever somebody, I kind of always lived life believing that I had to fight for what I wanted. Mm-hmm. So if someone gets a little toe to toe with me, they get a little aggressive in their communication. I'm like, Boom. Yeah. No, 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 no. Do not stand up to me. I, you know, you can't pull one over on me. And if I know that that's my tendency, if I, if I, then I can be more proactive and respond and kind of go, wow, this person's really kind of aggressive right now. What do I want to do with that? Versus that unconscious sort of, holy mm-hmm. cow, I'm, I'm already arguing with you and I don't even know it. Um, yeah. And so I think that that's the piece of it is, you know, practicing and becoming as aware as you can. And it's like a muscle. You got to really exercise that muscle to get used to responding rather than reacting and that yes. breath and taking time out and taking sips of water all of that stuff is such a critical part of that yeah it's funny i think one of my buttons or one of the things that i avoid is parts of facebook because 
when people start arguing and telling me what's your special ones, like political conversations. Yeah. So I've unfollowed followed many people on Facebook because and it, it doesn't matter what side of the spectrum people are on politically. It's like right. when people start like, this is how it is. And I don't think it's just um, politics, maybe anything. So I, I think I sound more like your daughter where that when someone tries to control me, it's like I get reactive. So one of my things is, okay, I can prevent it by stopping to follow people or just not spending as much time on social media. But also I know that. And it's like, okay, taking a deep breath, practicing, pausing. Um, so I don't start arguing with people because it pushes their buttons or my buttons get pushed. Um, so, yeah, that that's one for me. And I, I talk about social media, but obviously it comes up in other areas yeah, of my life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, the, thing, the thing that I love about you is kind of like you've got the prevention piece in there, you've got the management piece of it, and then it's kind of the, you know, how do you, you know, how, how do you cr- become more intentional about it? How do you become more conscious of what's going on? Yeah. And um, and I think that what I could just even feel when you were describing your button getting per- pushed, I mean, there's there's some place in your body that you notice that gets mm-hmm. a little triggered, and whether it's in the pit of your stomach or the hair on the back of my neck sometimes stands up or my ears perk up or I, my throat gets tight. You know, it's like yes. beginning to become aware of what, because typically we respond physically before we respond mentally. And so we notice that, wow, my, my heart's starting to race a little bit or I'm starting to get a little tight in the throat or pit in my stomach. Wow, I'm starting to get triggered. I'm going to take a deep breath right now. I have no mm-hmm. idea why I'm getting triggered. I have no yep. idea what's going on. But I'm just going to take a deep breath right now because when I take a deep breath, I can reclaim my brain I can go, okay, what do I want to do right now instead of what am I going to automatically do right now? Mm-hmm. And that deep breath, I mean, that's a moment. When you take a deep breath, that's a few seconds. That's not like telling you you have to, you know, go run a marathon or spend 30 minutes meditating. That's like moments that can be life-changing, a, like a few seconds to take a deep breath. Well, no, breath. It, it is, absolutely. And at the same time, it's really hard for a lot of us. And mm-hmm. so, uh, you know, one of the yeah. things I teach my parents, because it's hard to take that deep breath because that trigger happens so quickly, that the practice you can get into is if you take a deep breath all the time. If you know yeah. that there's sometimes that your kids trigger you, so it's like every time my kid asks me anything, I take a deep breath and then I answer. Even yeah. if it's something like, Mom, can I have ice cream? I take a deep breath. Mm-hmm. And then I answer because when they say something that triggers me, that deep breath is going to happen automatically, and then I will not be in it. So it's like that practice. It's like you do it when you don't have to, mm-hmm. so that you can do it automatically when you do. Good advice. I like that. Yeah, and I think deep breaths can help us through life, no matter what, not just with the button pushing. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's good to, to do it. Well, and deep breaths. If you're not a deep breath person, the other than just picking up a glass of water at my desk, you can't see me, Tara. But it's like mm. water is another thing. It's like that primal mm. part of our brain actually gets soothed and calmed down yep. when we sip some water. I've got parents who walk around with water bottles all the day long because they're like, okay, if I take a sip of water, then I will stay calm. You know, it's like oh. every time I every time I notice my my, you know, stomach clenching, I take, I take a sip of water, it calms me down again. So oh, that's an interesting one. That, I mean, I mean, water's good for you anyways. And, yeah, it calms you down yeah. as a grounding effect. So, wow, that's a new tip I just learned today. <laughs> well, the funny thing is that when I learned it, somebody said that the animal in your brain says, oh, I'm in a watering hole. It must be safe. I can take my time and respond. Oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Diane, is there anything else in relationship to button pushing that you haven't shared today that you'd like to share? Well, I think that I just want to go back to something I said earlier, which is how normal this is, right? Because a lot of times we end up judging ourselves, particularly as adults with ADHD. We're like, oh, I wish I hadn't said that. I can't believe I did that. And, you know, getting triggered and having buttons is a very, very human thing. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that it's you know, it's good or it's bad, it's just that it's normal. And so if you understand that this is a normal reaction and you and you can consciously say, okay, what, where do I want to make some changes? How do I want to make some changes? Whether it's prevention or management, it'll make it a lot easier for you than if you sit there and go, oh, man, I can't believe I'm doing this. And then you're, mm-hmm. then you're having a trigger about having triggers, right? So yeah. your button gets pushed about the fact that I have a button. So you want to be gentle and give yourself some grace because I don't know anybody who doesn't have a button. It just is a matter of kind of how big it is and what happens when it gets pushed. So know that this is normal and, um, you know, do some things to make some changes if you want to, but give yourself some grace as well. Okay. 
Um, so, Diane, could you give out your contact information? Um, we are actually towards the end, or we're at the end of today's show. Yes. So, again, we uh, impactadhd.com. We do parent training, coaching, and support. The great online resources, and if you in, online resource, and if you go out there um, on our homepage, you'll find some information about a freebie that you can get, and we'd love to have you join our tribe. Okay, thank you so much, Diane Dempster, and thank you everyone for taking the time to listen to ADHD Support Talk Radio. And be sure to stop by our new website at ADHDSupportTalk.com. Thanks again.